Hey everyone, welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. You got Jaime in Fuego here. And we are here to complete our run of Thing from Another World comic book reviews. This is episode five, so if you're just stumbling onto this, there are four episodes previous to this talking about the comic book adaptations and or sequelizations of the Thing material. Now this one is interesting because it's both the first printing and the last printing of any mm -hmm. Thing material in comic uh, book form. So, material, <laughs> book ending things properly. <laughs> Indeed. So, uh, we're going to start with this, and then we're going to talk about that. Now, this one is a straight... It's actually the first graphical adaptation of the original 1938 mm -hmm. The Thing from Another World book, or short story, right? Mm -hmm. It was a short um, story done by... Uh, it was uh, Who Goes There, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Who or, Goes There by, by uh, John W. Campbell. Uh, John W. Campbell's classic is what exactly. it says. Yeah, and it's, uh, it, it's a 50s adaptation, if I'm not mistaken. So this was like kind of the same era that we were seeing a lot of the EC comics, you know. No, like, this was like, 1976, this book. 76, wow. 76, but it was very 50s in presentation. Yeah, exactly. Especially with the type of artwork that they went for. It, mm -hmm. it was very inspired, in my mm -hmm. estimation, by like weird tales, you know, which was yeah. an EC imprint. And uh, it just, it, it carries that vibe very much so. And from what, I, since I haven't read the short story, and maybe at this point... I need to read the short story so we can complete that yeah. coverage completely. Probably should. Because we're going to do the movie, the yeah. original movie, which yep. I've which never was, seen. Well, well, the original movie was in the 50s. And so, yeah. I, I mean, the short story, I guess... This is the okay. first, like I said, graphical representation exactly. of it yeah. as opposed truly, to filmed. Truly. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, this one is called Who Goes There by John W. Campbell Jr. And uh, the adaptation is by Arnold Drake, the art by J Jack Abel. Mm -hmm. And this is very old school 70s look. Hey, I mean, the, so. I the mean... saucer they find is straight up flying saucer from any, any you know, any alien movie, movie from yeah, the yeah, 50s. 50s. That's so why I think 50s makes sense, like what you mm -hmm. said, even though this book was printed in the 70s. Yeah, it was written in the late 40s, early 50s, so it was like post-Cold War and, uh, excuse me, post-World War II. It still II, smells like, like those currently. 70s comics. It, it really I, I does, and, and I mean, the type of paper... Give it a whiff, man, like, give it a whiff. The type of paper that they printing. used in those 70s, man, yeah. But look at the artwork even back then was really, really good, sharp, crisp artwork. I mean, the mm -hmm. facial detail and the thing. See, that's what's it's, interesting is the thing was actually very humanoid back very then. Very much so, very much so. And as it's played by an actual human character in the thing from another world, the original mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this also has a very, just a... Man, I mean, it's more so on the scientific side as far as the debate amongst all the different characters and whatnot. Yeah, there's a debate and, about, you know, what they should do with this thing since they yeah. don't know anything about it. Um, it's the precursor to sort of the test in the John Carpenter movie. Yeah. But this is where they actually kind of get a close-up reveal of the uh, the and creature. It's got the weird multi-eyes. Yeah, the and three like eyes that. and the white hair and the green skin. It's like... They were trying to go for as out there as they could be back then, and it it's just kind of not in out my there anymore. Although now, luckily, yeah, later it, on it gets it creepy. gets to yeah. sort of the place where we know it, mm -hmm. where the first graphical representation was this, where it's mm -hmm. amassing all of the dogs, mm -hmm. and you kind of see some uh, similarities with the John Carpenter thing later on. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of that took inspiration from this comic because mm -hmm. it would have been out for 20 years at that point. Yeah, and I think this comic is what, like maybe 20 pages, something like that. Oh I mean, yeah, it's, it's I'll like, tell you exactly. Yeah, actually. yeah it's actually uh, collected in this. Uh, it's like 18, yeah, no, it's 18 16, pages, 16 pages. Okay, 16, yeah, 16 pages. pages. So mm -hmm. so yeah, it does really. I mean, it's a short story to begin with. So they did expand massively with all of the stuff that Carpenter Very did for dense, his though. film. And very, very dense comics and very, in the olden days were very dense with word bubbles. Very dialogue driven, dude. Like very much so. Like like exposition for the explanation of you know motivation and what is transpiring and everything, and just. But it still it still retains those same themes that we love so much about the being accusatory, the the bunker aspect, the you know who is and who isn't one of these monsters and. I, I will say this has a more uplifting ending than you yes. know, the other side. Yeah, well, absolutely. Actually, yeah, one hundred percent more successful different. ending. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it so was. It was regard. kind of a a more disturbing War of the Worlds mm -hmm. kind of approach, and uh, and it's I love this too. When I just looked at the yeah. cover, look the the cost back in nineteen seventy six seventy nine cents. Uh, 
<laughs> 79 cents because this is oversized. It's mm. like three issues in one. And yet still back then, that was... Uh, that wasn't too much to shake a, shake a coin at. Man. No, no. 79 cents was expensive back then, but it's mm-hmm. because it was a double-sized it's issue double-sized and stuff. Issue. Yeah, correct. So, I mean, it was a it was a cool representation. and It's good I to mean, have in the collection. I mean, it didn't yeah. cost me very much to That's add it. Up. So I have everything comic book there yeah. is. I just really want to read the short story at this point, since yeah. that is the basis for all of this and the fact that I'm sure it's probably only... You know, 20, 30, 40 pages, something of that we nature. We should. We really I mean, should. I mean, it would just take a day. You and I could both read it, and then we could maybe Knock out the com- last complete review. our coverage. Maybe do that at the same time that we do the movie review. Yeah, that would the make original, sense. original, original. That would make review. sense. We could do that. But then this one is an author that you are quite the big fan of, right? Big fan. So yeah. this one is The Thing, The Northman Nightmare. Mm-hmm. Now, the reason it's printed on paper and bound the way it is is because this was re- released as a digital-only comic book. Yeah. But it was released in 2011 as a prequel to The Thing 2011 prequel to John Carpenter's Thing. Which we're about to do a commentary for. Indeed, indeed. So, So, um, yeah, that's already available on the channel by the time you guys see this. So we've done a commentary for both John Carpenter and the prequel at this point. But this was written by Steve Niles. And if you guys don't know Steve Niles, he's the one that actually is the original creator of 30 Days of Night. And went on to do a ton of horror comic books that have been really big but he is he's terrific man terrific yeah. writer and this is what i liked about this a lot is there's minimalistic dialogue yeah it's not a lot because it's set in the 1700s during mm-hmm. viking times yeah and it's it's basically having to do with the creature that landed that eventually ends up being the creature from the prequel and then the sequel from 1980s with uh, John mm-hmm. Carpenter. so It's about the first encounter, but not quite the first encounter. It's about those who arrive on the scene of the first encounter mm-hmm. and the first like small village that's been ravaged after that transpires. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Now, this book is colorized. Um, it is one single issue. It's like 24 pages long, so that's like right. a 12-turnable 12, 12 page standard comic book. But um, I'll go through it with you. But go ahead, Fuego. Why don't you tell them what the story is? Well, so we, we start out and we meet these Vikings and they're on a ship. and uh, They're kind they're, of yeah. stuck in the, in the ice yeah, exactly. as they're exploring. And so they, they basically get off of uh, you know their, their boats and they, they go and they start searching and they come across... Not this. even everyone makes it <clears throat> safely off the boat because they're all weighed down so heavily mm-hmm. by their clothing and such. Yeah, exactly. And they come across this well-fortified small little like outpost town and pretty much everybody is dead except for a few women and there is like almost d- discrepancies of story and like skepticism amongst them because of the fact that they don't feel like they're getting the entirety of the picture about how everybody has been killed and what exactly transpired and lo and behold yes there are infected people they don't reveal it initially so it does really it it, it follows the thing format but it does just put it in a different era, like completely, which adds an essence of just captivism to it. And, I was uh, so drawn in by this book. I yeah, loved and, it. And the artwork is very cool. Fantastic uh, artwork. Once we actually get to some of the, the, the guts and the transformations and the nastiness, it's very impressive. Uh, well, just look at the detail of the faces, though. Yeah. The detail of the female's face up front and the, and the males, like they all have specific looks and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And then um, there's craziness that ensues as far as not trusting each other. Exactly. But let me get I, I to mean, some of the once creature again, it's, stuff. It, it's all of those tropes that are... De- I mean, to, not even to use a negative word like tropes. It's just the fact that that's what happens in... The colorization got a little wonky here because my yeah. printer sucks, but that's just it supposed happens. to be fire. <laughs> but you get to you do get to see some thingish transformations... Mm-hmm. And it's a really interesting story. So this sim- I mean, it's simply just about this group of Vikings mm-hmm. having to fight a thing that has taken over one of their outposts. I mean, look at it. There's yeah. a decapitation right there. It's it's pretty awesome stuff, guys. It is. And, I, I mean, it's all just kind of resolved with the, with the quickness for the most part. But mm-hmm. then again, you have to keep in mind that it was... But is it resolved yes, is the and, question. And that's the one thing that they also leave at the I love that. Show. Dude, I love that because bit of art. Because the fact that it's obviously not completely resolved. Look at this. Look at how resolved. disturbing that yeah. is. I it's, love that It's piece. not completely resolved because in, in this time, hundreds and hundreds of years before, I, I mean... Yeah, there was obviously something that survived, which is why we even have. Look the at this pre-board. homage! Like even the artwork here is an homage to the movies. Yeah. I can't show that because it's a bit of a spoiler. But yeah, with the beard and the hair, and mm-hmm. then no, it's it's terrific. 
this is really good, you guys. And the nice thing about this you can is, just find it I'll tell you, just, just Google the thing Northman yeah. Nightmare, and you will find this book. You can read it right this very second. Mm -hmm. So definitely go and check it out. The thing Northman Nightmare, I, I really like this. But yeah, this was the last representation of the thing in comic book form. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I really am glad I printed it up that I'm gonna have a physical copy along with the other physical copies, but you don't have to have the physical copy to read this. So go and check it out. This episode or this issue of Starscream is available. It wasn't terribly expensive if you wanna have that in your possession as well. But that is it for all of the Thing From Another World comic books that we know of, you guys. Mm -hmm. So if you enjoyed this series, I, I'm glad and I appreciate you watching them all. If you haven't watched them all, uh, this is going to link back to the first episode so you can start from the beginning and watch them. But thank you guys very much for watching this series of comic book reviews. I'm trying to get the viewership up on the comic reviews because there's literally stuff in franchises that you guys love that you don't even know about that are extra stories. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to continue to go through them. I've got some new Halloween comic book reviews coming up. I'm going to be reviewing all of the Nightmare on Elm Street comic books that I have in the very near future with good reason. Woo. So uh, keep and your eyes Fright peeled Night. for all of that. And I did just up. pick up all like 28 issues of the Fright Night comic series. So I'll get Damn. to that eventually as well. So thank you guys very much if you appreciate these and have watched all the way to this point. Uh, click the like button if you did so and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet for some reason but you stuck it out all the way through a comic book review. Weird. Until next time though, I've been Cecil Laird. Gracias. I mean, fire. And remember, stay scared.